What's up, guys, and welcome back. You're tuned into talk number 11. This is the Tahira Show. This is part two in our relationship series. Part one, I started in talk 10. It was reasons why you're not falling in love. Part two is red flags versus gold flags. So there's tons of YouTube comment, tons of relationship experts, tons of marriage, whatever, memes, whatever have you, about red flags. About, oh my God, like these are the signs. If you see these, like don't even go, do not enter. What about the gold flags though? And when I say gold flags, I'm using like the golden ticket from like Willy Wonka, right? Because that's where I live all the time. Creative. But like, yeah, where's the gold flags at? So stay tuned to find out my version of red flags versus gold flags. You're tuned in to Tahira Show on YouTube. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, then please subscribe, tune in, make sure you start, sign up to my newsletter. I have like a tons of stuff going on. It's not only just YouTube channel, also I have a podcast. I also have a book coming out, a leadership book. It's not a relationship based book, so maybe I shouldn't tag that here, but it's a leadership book. Nonetheless, you support black creatives like myself from Brooklyn, independent, all here on YouTube, trying to make themselves into something. Then you can support my book. It's on Amazon and yeah, let me know what you think about it. Before we get too, too, too far in, I want to make sure that you guys um, follow me on Instagram. I am I Let The Good Times Roll. Make sure you follow me on Twitter, at T Axorus. I tweet all day. I'm more active on Twitter than I am on Instagram. I'm still, like, I'm very much a writer, so I'm, like, always, like, into talking some crazy shit. But I'm on Instagram, too. You can follow me on Snapchat, Facebook, Tahira Savannah. Just Google Tahira Savannah. You'll find me everywhere. Make sure you also tag my music, T Slaves. All right, let's get into it. Red flags versus gold flags. Like, really? I'm gonna do like a red flag and then I'm like how it could also be a gold flag because like that's how I feel about things right it's like so much people I feel like are held back because of what it's out there what's been said what these, these youtubers with all these views millions of views you feel like so many people watch this video maybe like you should be following it no a lot of people can watch 22 million people can watch the same thing and have a different point of view that you don't know you know so let's not like get too held up on quantifying information and numbers and just because it looks like this person has a lot of followers or this video got a lot of likes that it has any validity to it like everything still applies to us when we're talking about love if you guys watched my first video that's basically where i stayed and i explained to you guys there's a lot of reasons why you're not following loves and it's probably not anything that you think it's because you're looking outside let's just stay right here same thing where i feel with red flag so let's get into our first red flag versus gold flag so the first red flag that I read about and I heard about on here all the time is, what if you don't like their friends? They say, show me your friends, I'll show you who you are. So when you get into know somebody in the beginning stage, you hang out with them, you're at game nights, you're just getting to know them. You don't know anything outside of, like you're literally getting to know somebody, right? It's not like, maybe your Instagram stalking them, maybe you're, you got people following them, whatever people do. I know there's a lot of covert operations in love. I get it, I used to be on that side too. It's like, I'm following them, you don't know trying to sell on it like you don't know if you're being normal though red flag is like you hang around with their friends and it's like you know what i think you're all your friends are like assholes that is so seemed as like a red flag so let's say maybe it's not though maybe you came into their life to pull them away from the friends that you don't necessarily like so let's start with the person that said that they don't like the person's friends you're obviously, that's judging, number one, right? Because it's like, before you can say, for you to say, I don't like your friends, that means that you don't feel comfortable with saying like, well, how did you meet that friend? Like, you know, you have to go deeper in that person's relationship with every friend that you're talking shit about. Like, well, where'd you meet this person? Well, I met this person in college. Where'd you meet that person? Well, I knew this person since childhood. That makes the difference. But if you blanket just some money because you're just getting to know them and yeah, you don't have time for all that. You're at work, you're running your business, you're doing whatever, we're all out here, we're all influencers at this point. You don't got time to be doing all that shit because you're doing your own thing. You don't like their friends. But you're their friend. And you like yourself. So yeah, you know, I feel like our generation, millennials, like I said before in the first video, this is really about my age group. You know, I can't really talk too much for people too much older than me or too much younger than me because I don't live there. I can only live here and I'm talking, I recognize there's a lot of young people that are not getting married, dating, having long-term relationships, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not saying not just married, like marriage in your life. Like sometimes you don't want to get married. Like I get that. Like you know, there's a lot of business reasons why you don't want to get married. You don't want to... But you're, you're still working together as a unit, you know? Like, eventually, you want to, like, 
spend all this hard working life that you're doing right now, you want to spend it with that person. So you're working towards that because that's what the damn sure I do. Let me freaking tell each other now so that we could just be lit on the jets and go everywhere and our kids can be lit. Like, it's going to come. But right now it's like, all right, not every day is like a holiday. So not liking someone's friend in the initial period of you getting to know them doesn't necessarily have to be a red flag. I think it could be a gold flag. Like, I don't think, like, in my relationships, I mean, guys, and I mean, it just depends also if you're, like, the girl or if you're, like, the guy. Like, it just, it's a lot deeper than that, and there's a lot of relationship experts that are going deeper than where I'm going right now. I just want to throw out a lot of stuff that I just don't agree with that I see that's so, like, popular. And I'm like, it's stuff that is popular in our generation right now in 2020, and it's, like, not helping people, though. So it's, like why is it popular you know i don't feel like just because you disagree with your friends that it means that it's it's like it's a red flag i feel like sometimes it could be a gold sometimes that person needs an escape from friendship like if you're not if you're dating somebody and your friends are like your main life and then you meet somebody that person that you meet is meant to kind of be that oh well there's something more than friendship you know like that's what i was my husband here we met in a friend group we tried to like date and be friends in that group but eventually it got so deep between me and him people started recognizing it's like oh well y'all left before the rest of us yeah because we had other business to take care of it started friction eventually and it was also because we weren't like being super just letting everybody in our business like we knew our shit was so real that it was like kind of like a secret a little bit between me and him so we would play like oh no i don't really like him I like him whatever and then link up after the party on the side and you know our friends would see us because it's like we saw you guys leave and we saw you you know that's why everybody used to tell us, like, whoa, y'all don't need to sneak because we already see it, but whatever. It wasn't the sneaking, it was just more so the getting to know each other intimacy without the aspect of friends and the people that know us and the group that we met in and whatever. Like, we really had to go out of our way. They extradited us, too. Like, they kicked us off the hood, we stopped chilling, and, you know, they came for us, whatever. And then all those friends came back around. You know, shit happens. It, ex it, it, it happens, though. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want you to feel like, oh, you went through that, and it's like, because my friends turned my back on me. D no, sometimes that's, like, the, the sign in your 30s that, like, oh, your friends turn your back on you, you probably onto some shit lit. Like, think about it that way. Maybe it was a gold flag. The second red flag, well, I don't know if this one is so much a red flag, but just, a, we'll put it in that category. Unfamiliar territory. So you're dating someone who you said on your list of, like, things I will not date. Like, I'm talking for as a woman now, right? But I feel like this part probably maybe applies for guys too. So for a girl, let's say for me, I said, this is real, I'm never dating anybody that went to jail. That was something that my parents said and my family said and whatever. Like, I studied criminal justice, so I was like, I'm not against criminals. I kind of... But in my mind, I'm like a judgment zone. I'm not gonna date nobody that has a, cr a criminal background. I, I said it super like studious. A criminal background, bitch. I'm judging myself. Let's say for a guy, you say, I don't wanna date no girl that has another baby, uh, has a baby father. I don't know, good luck. But <laughs> let's just say that those are our parameters, right? And now you run into somebody who went to jail. They was in jail and they ran into you and I was like, oh my God, I didn't know that about you, but like, I'm super attracted. Like he had went to jail. You run into this girl and it's like, oh my God, I normally don't get attracted to women that have kids, but I can't get you out of my mind. Just because it's unfamiliar. I feel like when things are unfamiliar, mind already, like this is outside of just like maybe love, like maybe just like in life, your body, your physiology just goes into like creating reasons as to why you're not meant to be and blah, blah, blah. like that's us taking in societal pressures and stuff which i get like you know i study sociology along with criminal justice to kind of get all aspects of things you know you gotta understand crime rates as it re responds to what's going on in the economy for you to really understand criminal justice and criminals like you know what i mean it's the same thing with love though it's the same thing with relationships it's the same thing when we're dealing with people it's a just because they were on your not list doesn't mean that you should just like write them off or like constantly because i feel like i've i understand that there's people that are, are attracted to people but they don't fit this plan they don't fit the the the, the script let's say script i'm a writer right they don't fit the script for what you say or you told your friends or your mom or your dad or your aunt and them and whoever who you would bring home because they don't fit that script you feel like well and it's like some, I feel like so many people lose out on like people in that. Like, and it goes both ways probably. Cause it's like, you know, you judge, you judging them or whatever it is. You're not really giving the universe and yourself time to just like cultivate this relationship in the real way. I mean, if I let, listen to my friends who came in my ears like, well, you have a master's degree in criminal justice. Frankie wants to jail. Like, how does that work? It fucking works. 
Like, <laughs> obviously it works. He's never been back to jail. I've been arrested before. Like, you know what I mean? It works. Like, we work together. You're not supposed to be, like, equilibrium. It can be like this. That's what makes the shit fucking fun. Like, you know what I'm trying to say? So, I see it as a gold flag as well. Um, just because it's unfamiliar doesn't mean... I mean, that's my personality too. But I also think that there's, like, an adventure aspect to love. Like, love or itself is, like, an adventure. You go... You're at a bar and you run into a couple... You know, but I just start talking to them. Even when I'm by myself sometimes, I'm like, yo, how'd you guys meet? Like, love is just exciting. Make it exciting. Keep it exciting, you know? Like, it's not all about what people think it's about. Like, oh my God, I've been married to the same person. We have the same shitty kids. Like, no, it's not that. It's, like, exciting. Like, my kids are crazy. That makes it fun. My spouse is super crazy. That makes it crazy. Like, you know? Get into that. Like, it's okay. Like, we're breaking the stigma against all these nobody lives in the Trump world like you know what I mean like I feel like Donald Trump Ivanka and Jared are like oh, oh, and they're not they're like the fakest pieces of shit I've ever seen we don't want to live in that world anymore so that means that all of us have to start talking about like how our real families are how real childhoods are and there's a lot of us that do that I've been following a lot of like relationship podcasts specifically black owned and just like whatever there's a lot of like mixed relationships people are like black and Spanish and Asian and this those are the ones, because I'm in an interracial relationship too, so it's also cool to hear, like, how cultures blend. I don't know, I just find it interesting. But even if you're same sex, like, I listen to white people, I listen to black people, I listen to Indian people, like, whatever. And you can, we, can, we can learn from love, I think. You can learn from everybody's story, honestly. Sometimes I watch Jerry Springer just to hear, like, oh my god. Like, but they're up here because they're in love, even if I think it's ratchet. All right, so my next red flag. This one video is going to also, I want to give this little thing because I feel like the last video was like way long. This video is going to be much shorter because it's a series, right? So I want you guys to kind of watch all of this together. So I think the first video will maybe have been the longest and then this video is going to be shorter and then maybe the last video will be like shortest. But we'll see. Um, but yeah, so basically what I'm trying to get to is like your love language. Like just because they don't speak your love, love they don't understand your love language right away or they combat how you feel about things because they don't know you and they challenge you in the way that you view love or your whole, what I call your dogma, like this is what I do and this is how I stand and if you don't get with this, then get left. And obviously I'm talking for females right now because I don't, I'm not a guy and I can't really speak to this point because I only understand females in that kind of way. Um, I told Frankie to come help me do this video. He doesn't want to talk about relationships. Just because they don't, you perceive them to not understand your love language now doesn't mean that Y'all can't form your own love language together, right? So that was a red flag, then I'm flipping to a gold flag. Maybe you're the type of person, woman or man, to be challenged. Maybe it's not you're just looking for a person that's just like you. You're looking for someone who's opposite than you. Remember, opposite to track, you know? This Grey's Anatomy just came back on, so I've been like, I mean, I've been watching Grey's Anatomy my whole life. I'm always watching it on Netflix and then watching it, like, as it's coming out. But I remember her say this one time, like, gr the character Grey, she was dealing with, like, her mom, and then, like, she was trying to marry her husband, and it's, like, a story arc. If you follow Grey's Anatomy, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. She went, and she was like, Meredith, you know, my mother was saying, like, Meredith, like, I wanted you to be extraordinary. And this whole time, she thought she was saying, like, her as an individual woman. Her mother never, like, married and never took a risk in love. So that's what her mom was trying to tell her, like, don't be ordinary be extraordinary find the love do it like do everything get them be the mother be the surgeon be the everything meredith the storyline in the show shout out to shonda um basically meredith was going back and forth like she went to shrink she went to the you know she's trying to her mom was dead already like she couldn't really f figure out like there so she's going through just like what she got left and you know that was her mama's own like Imagine that I grew up and I find out that you're ordinary. And this whole time she's thinking that her mom's talking about like, again, like being like her, like being a surgeon that's like just top notch and whatever. And no, her mom was trying to say being extraordinary is like partnering up with someone, doing something that I wasn't incapable of doing. Finding a love of your life and risking every Like that's what's extraordinary. I love that lesson because I just feel like so many of us don't process that. Like me finding Frankie was extraordinary. Him finding me was extraordinary. Surviving through the friendships and what I just told you guys in the... Those of you that know me personally know. Those of you that don't, it's like we went through a lot of stuff just to maintain our relationship. We got moved out to LA. Everything we do is extraordinary. So even days where we get into arguments and it's not good and it's like, oh God, I need, I need, I don't know what the future of our relationship looks like. We still know that we're in something extraordinary. You know, we didn't understand each other's long language at first. We didn't, we weren't even interested. We were like, I'm gonna try to be a friend. I don't really care. Let me see if you can make me an actor. I'll see if I can get money as your manager. Like, and then you know. It's 2020, you guys. 
the days of the past and the way things were and us meeting in, on, on campuses or whatever. Like whatever story that people tell about themselves and not your story. You go and find your own story. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am to hear Savannah. This is talk number 11, part two in our relationship series, Red Flags versus Gold Flags. If you like this video, share it with your single friends. Let them know that he's here. I'm going to say he's slaves. Tahira is out here and it's lit. And I wish you love, life, happy Thanksgiving. See you guys next time.